Yours, welcome. Hey, how are you guys doing today? Good? Yeah, enjoying this nice weather we have. Um, again, my name is Detective John Hatcher. I've been with the Cass Police Department uh, for 17 years. I've been actually fortunate to do a bunch of different uh, things with the police department. I actually spent 10 years as a canine officer um, and handled three dogs, which was a really exciting um, kind of thing to deal with. Um, I went in and spent a, a time in investigations that I worked on uh, persons' crimes and also um, paper crime, white collar crime. Then about a year ago, I got transferred to uh, crime prevention. It's a unit that started with the Cash Police Department years ago, and it's evolved through the years of actually, it's not so much crime prevention that you go and give talks um, about crime prevention, but also that I sit on a bunch of different community boards um, that can kind of help out with what the law enforcement with the Casper Police Department can help out with community events. We have a lot of times, I send a lot of different ones that have um, different parades or different walks or different things like that. We help them get their permits and things like that they need to do. So it's, it's I tell everyone I've had a, a um, very wide range of jobs with the police department, but this one has been really fulfilling because you get to go around and meet people like you. Um, different organization, I just came from, I'm on the Suicide Prevention Task Force um, here in town. That was a great group of people that I've met on there. So there's a lot of different people that I guess need to realize that there's good people in this community that really love this community and really look out for it and try to help each other. A lot of times you get jaded as a police officer saying, I'm the only one here that really cares about um, this community. I'm here to serve and protect it. But when you get out and realize there's a lot of other people in this community that um, help donate their time, do a lot of things, it's kind of a neat experience. Um, I tell people I forget I even have a gun and badge sometimes, which is kind of a neat thing. <laughs> so what I'm here to talk to you today is about the scams. Uh, when I was working, paper crimes, white collar crimes, um, scams were a big deal. They continue to be a big deal. Uh, the hardest things about scams are catching the people. Uh, they, and that's why we want to try preventing people being victims of scams. These scams, if you guys have ever been called by any of them, they're going to have a foreign accent that you can't really understand them. That is because they are in another country. Um, probably over in Asia or India is where they come from. They use a very complicated uh, phone systems that actually, when the, the phone gets called into you, it actually goes through a bunch of different, um, different stations that actually changes that number, changes that location. So even if we can actually catch a person and capture their number, we start doing search warrants on those phone numbers and they bounce around. Um, the one what my partner and I did, we tracked it nine or 10 times as it bounced around the United States and then it went over to Indonesia. Um, and when it goes over there, we're not, we can't go over, go over and get them. Um, so unfortunately, these people that are getting scammed lose their money and there's no way of getting it back. I had a lady that she lost about $6,000. She was in her late 70s, early 80s, of course she was. Um, $6,000 is a lot to anyone except, but especially to someone in their late 70s or early 80s, $6,000, that's, that's a good chunk of their money they're trying to live on. Um, and it was sad that I had to tell her there was no way I was gonna find her money. I could not get her out. She, she was out $6,000. Some of the scams that we're having right now here in Casper, if you guys have been called on anything else, is the Publisher Clearinghouse. They've been calling around for the, like the last six months. They call and say that you've just won a new Cadillac and you've also won a half a million dollars. The only catch is you need to send them the money to pay your taxes first and then they will bring your money to you. My thing I've told people is I'd like if you entered Publisher Clearinghouse, you know, I said, well, when Ed McMahon, when I was a kid, I remember Ed McMahon, he's saying is you can't win if you don't enter. So if you didn't enter anything, it's going to be a hard time to win. What they use for this scam is called a green dot card. And if you're ever in Walmart or some of the stores, you'll see them. They're Visa or MasterCard or different kind of credit cards, and they'll say green dot on them. And what they are, it's a card where you can just put money on it, and it works as a credit card. Uh, my daughter, who's in high school, has went on different school trips and everything else. I'll go and throw some money on that, buy one of those green dot cards, throw a few hundred dollars on it, and then she can go anywhere. If Visa is accepted, you can do this green dot card. So whether she goes eats, she goes to the water park, she just slides and the money comes off that card. 
It's a prepaid credit card on us. You can put as much money as you want on it. Um, they are not guaranteed though. I mean, as far as you lose that card, you're off that money. It is not an actual credit card as such. All it is is being that it's a visa, it runs, visas allowed it to run through their um, systems and they will take the money and they'll do the transaction fees that goes through with it and else. So what they usually will have you do is if you've won something, um, please go and get me $250, $300 on a green dot card. You can buy them in these stores, you can get them at the um, Come and Go's, Mini Marts, Walmarts. Put that on, mail that to us, and then we will give you your money or your trip to the Caribbean. It's an all-inclusive, it's worth $8,000, but it only costs you $300 if you just send us it on the green dot card. That is what the scam, you'll send that $300 and you'll never see it again. What makes these hard is when you go and get these, there's no trackable. You go to Walmart, you buy one, you tell them, here's my $300, put it on. Walmart takes $300, they scan put it on the card, that's it. There's no trend, there's no actually written down on who bought that green dot card. It is clean money. Um, there's no way of tracking that person. Only way we can try to do it, which would be, and we don't want some of these scams hard, but where we have caught people on green dot cards that are using like here in town, is we can go back to Walmart and try to use video cameras and find out what person actually used a green dot card. But if you're going and buying that green dot card, um, mainly that's when we catch them is the person goes back and uses the green dot card. That's how it's saying. These people aren't using these green dot cards here. So anytime you hear anyone calls you anything else, there was another one about the IRS that went around a little bit before income tax season saying that you were behind on your taxes and that if you did not pay on your back taxes, they were going to send the Casper Police Department to come and arrest you and take you to jail. That one got a lot of people very, very nervous because now they're involving that you're going to get arrested. My thing about it is if someone calls you that, I've always paid my taxes. I don't have any tax liens or anything else. Why? But I do believe there are some people in this country that don't believe in paying their taxes or sometimes forget. And I think that's the ones that they probably prey on. You know, that there's, a, that, that there's someone out there that doesn't pay their taxes, so we'll try to shoot in the dark and see if that person might have forgot. Or, unfortunately, I don't know how they do this. I mean, I really wish I could catch someone that's one of these scam artists and really um, interview them and figure out why. I don't know if it's in today's um, society and we're so digitally aroused, but it seems like elderly people is the ones they really prey on. And I don't know how they get their data to actually put the phone calls in. But they're really smooth talkers, they confuse you a lot. So you might get an elderly person that could fall and say, maybe I forgot to file my income tax last year. And I want to be a good person, so by all means, I will say because I don't want to have the IRS coming after me. But it seems like a lot of these scams are on the elderly, and, and they do, they're fast talkers, um, and they do a lot of confusing. I don't know if any of you guys ever gotten phone calls. They haven't popped up in the last few months. It was about a year or two ago about um, family member being in jail in a foreign country, being arrested in a foreign country. Um, I worked with that one that a lady sent her grandson had been arrested in Canada for being a little too crazy at a bar and that they, she needed to send him $2,000 um, as far as to get him out. She has a grandson, so she's like, okay. She called me, the reason why she thought, she, funny because he was arrested in Canada, but her money was sent to Panama. <laughs> and she actually wired money down to this address in Panama. And when I questioned her, she goes, it was a police officer that called. I had to trust him. That's the thing about it, unfortunately. Even though her grandson was supposedly in jail in Canada, she wired $2,000 to Panama. Um, again, another sad thing I had to tell her, and she was so confused. She's like, I haven't seen my grandson forever. You know, I didn't know. He was probably embarrassed, but I didn't want to call his mom and dad, that he was arrested for being in a bar fight. So that's what these scammers do, is they work on people's emotions. Um, last summer, we were having a problem of people calling in, they called in a about four or five times, they called in the Walmarts, a Kmart, and Family Dollar. They call actually into the stores and say, we put a bomb in the store. Unless you give us money, we're blowing the store up here in an hour. Again, we need money put on a green dot card or we're blowing the store up. Um, and we got calls. There's only one lady actually that 
paid the um, $250, and she said, I don't mind being out that $250 because I have a clear conscience. I'd feel so bad if I didn't pay, and Walmart got blown up, and I had friends there. And I said, okay, normally when someone does that, they're not calling individuals to try to save Walmart. They're after the mayor of Casper, the chief of police, so someone like a, a, a bigger person that can try to get some money. They're not just trying to do it for ransom when they put bombs out there. The other thing is, if it's any like terrorist or group or anything else, they don't tell us where their bombs at. It just goes off. Um, then they report back afterwards. So my thing for you today is to tell you about anything with a green dot card, it's going to be a scam. No matter how good it sounds, it's going to be a scam with green dot cards. So that's kind of what the scams that we're dealing with out there. Um, they're also, they, they, one they deal with also with law enforcement is that if you've gotten a ticket that you forgot to pay your ticket in another state, go ahead and send us some money. We'll take care of that ticket for you. If any people travel enough, a lot of times they're like, I can't remember. Maybe, maybe I was in Nevada. I don't remember getting a speed ticket there, but again, if it's a police officer or a court's calling us, I better take care of that. Um, we will not come if they ever threaten that the Cash Police probably come and arrest you. We don't come and do that on some on the phone. On uh, some of that, they'll do that. That right there is going to show you the scam. With the IRS thing, we never get involved with the federal government and them coming. If someone hasn't paid their taxes, the, the IRS doesn't call me and say, hey, Detective Patrick, can you go over and arrest this person at 123 West First for not paying their taxes? That is nothing that the local law enforcement do. So the thing, like you said, they're, they're, they deal on a lot of people's emotions and um, worries, and they use different things. Yes? What does a green dot card look like? It looks like a regular card. Credit it looks card. like a regular credit card. It says Visa on it? Yep, it says Visa on it. Yep. Um, I think MasterCard, they all say different one. They'll say, well, they, next time you're at, they're usually up by the uh, checkout stand at <coughs> Walmart. Go to um, Walgreens. Walgreens has them, yep. Right across from the cash register. And they'll, and they'll see green dot on them. Mm -hmm. um, there's Will also it have a green dot on it that you see? No, no, they, it's in the packaging. Okay, and it says gotcha. green dot on them. Gotcha. There's also gotcha. a blue something. Green Dot is was a company. Green Dots were ones okay. that they made. There's some other different ones that are out there. And if you go, like I said, Walgreens or Walmarts, there's different different companies okay. that's went and done that. Um, and I said it's, <coughs> it's a great idea. I've used it. My daughter just came back from a, uh, a uh, what was it? Student council down in New Me um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. I threw some money on a card for her so she didn't have to worry about carrying much cash. Um, she's only 17 years old. I'm not going to send her. They, they, they recommend us send $500 cash with them. And I'm not going to have a 17 year old running around with cash in her pocket. So I got her three of these green dot cards, put $200 on each one of them, and then she could go wherever. When she came back, I just go, I can swipe and pull that money right back off it. That's what these people do. They go and um, you give them to them, and they just go and swipe them at an ATM or anything else and pull the cash right off of it. Well, you don't even need to send the card. Right. There's a number on that card. If you just tell uh, your daughter what that number is. That's the same? Yeah. Yeah. yeah she, can, she can get the money just by quoting that number. Yeah, and, and they're, like you said, they're a great tool. They help mm -hmm. out a lot of things out there. Yeah. But again, <laughs> the criminals, there's great things that's been put out there legally that the criminals jump on real quick and um, take advantage of. And tell you what, um, the, I've had my debit card compromised three times in the last two months mm. that I've gotten called on. Um, and, and luckily, my, my, my bank catches it um, and tells me about it, and then I have to do the whole paperwork of filling out everything else. But um, it's definitely out there. The, if you guys go and pay at the pump, which pretty much every place makes you pay at the pump now, um, with a card, you have to go inside and pay cash or swipe your card. They have the criminals out there have things, things called skimmers that they put on the pumps, and they'll go in and they'll actually unplug the computer that reads and how much goes into the cashier, and they'll plug this skimming machine onto it, and then they'll close up the machine, and then every time every card that's swiped, it takes all those numbers. And then they'll come back a few days later, open up the thing, take the skim around, play the computer, and they've captured everyone that swiped a credit card. Uh, about a year ago... Have you found that in Casper? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Flying J a year ago had a skimmer there, and we actually caught the person uh, putting the skimmer on it. 
Um, about a year ago, though, um, just after it happened at Flying J, um, it came across, and I don't know if they require it in the gas stations now or what happened, but I've noticed they put secure tape now, and next time you're there to go pump gas, where the little box is, where you swipe your card, there's usually like a little barrel key that they open that box up and can change the tape and change anything else. There should be a piece of, we call integrity tape, it'll be like a little piece of red tape that's across it. That tape should be intact. If that tape is not intact, do not use that pump and let someone go inside and put it. Now the heat sometimes can, after a while, warp those and break, but it's best to go in and tell someone, hey, I noticed that integrity tape's broken. So they started putting on, if there's a place you go and buy fuel and they don't put that integrity tape on, I would probably buy gas somewhere else. But everywhere I kind of went around Casper and looked, they started putting this red piece of integrity tape on. And it just lets you know. So if that's cracked, then you know someone's been in that box. Because if someone goes out and changes the, um, anything within the computer or changes the uh, paper, they then put a new piece of tape over it. So it shows that there's tape on there and that no one's been in it. So that's something to watch out for. Um, some other things that we found here in town um, has happened in the summer and in the winter um, with elderly people are um, lawn mowing service and um, snow shoveling. That people will come by and um, they'll offer to mow your lawns in the summertime and shovel your snow in the wintertime. And the, the biggest thing right here to realize that this scam is they don't have a lawnmower or they don't have a snowshoe. <laughs> <laughs> they ask to borrow yours if you have one. Um, it's a way, and this is not so much a scam, this is a way to case your house. They want to get into you and find out what you have, even if it's in your garage. So we had um, some guys this winter. There was three guys. Um, fortunately, we never, we never caught them. Um, but they got into about six or seven different homes by that way by saying, I'll come shovel your walk. I don't have a shovel, but do you have one? Yeah, we have one. Where do you keep it? It's in the garage. OK. And they just allow them to go in the garage and get the shovel. Um, person can go in and just do whatever they want. I also find out being a police officer, I don't know how many of you guys that have an um, attached garage, that you actually lock your door that goes from your garage into your house. Do you all lock that door Every or night. secure it? Every night. Because that is a way a lot of people forget to do that. And if someone can get into your garage, then they can get into your house. I also find that a lot of people do not lock the back door of their attached garage. Um, they forget about it. And so if you don't lock the one that comes into your house off your garage, they now come in that back garage door, and now they come right straight into your house. So again, that's the main thing. There are people, there are kids, and there's a, um, adults that go around and mow lawns and shovel walks for people to make some money. But they will have their, they should have, and they should have their, their lawn mowers and their shovels. So be aware of that. We've had both those people um, People call me on those scams saying, I don't think this person's legitimate. They wanted to mow my lawn, but they asked if I had um, all the equipment for me to mow it for them. And I says, you didn't offer to them. No, I just thought that was strange. Yeah, yeah. Can you give me a description of that person in the neighborhood they were at, and I'll go over and try to find out who this person is. They are now requiring the city of Casper that anyone door-to-door -door salesman have to wear a badge um, with their picture on it. It's going to be kind of a... It's not a very good one because it's one of those pictures that they do a quick picture of you. But it should have a picture on it and the person who they're selling for. Now they've required, started requiring that. So if you have any door-to-door -door salesmen coming to you, if they do not have that on, they have not registered with the city. Um, so Does that include Schwans? <laughs> Schwans, no. They're not Schwans. These are the ones that are actually just the door-to-door -door sale will come in. Um, the Kirby Salesman's. Um, mm -hmm. Vivian, the security people that come around and sell stuff, Swans, no, as far as, it's one of the ones, some of the ones you're supposed to even have one to go around and pass out um, flyers, so let's take for flyers. A lot of times people, they kind of go by and those of you just passing out that, hey, you know, this is, there's going to have this um, community event next week. But anytime you're going and knocking on someone's door and you're soliciting things, they're supposed to go down to the city and get a license. It's been kind of laxed over the years, and there's a lot of problems. We're getting complaints um, from people. So now they're starting to require you come down, you have to pull a license. You also have to have this badge on. So if you have someone that comes to your door, um, says they're selling Kirby's, we do get these people. And unfortunately, Kirby does not hire the nicest looking people sometimes. Because I went out and I've actually been called out a couple, and they're legitimate Kirby salesmen. 
they got the Kirby sack vacuum cleaner, they got all the credentials, and that is, I wouldn't buy a Kirby vacuum cleaner for that, I wouldn't buy, open my door for this person. Mm -hmm. um, but Kirby has hired them, and they're out there being, and they're legit. They had their badge on with their picture on it and everything else. Is there a penalty have. if they don't have it? I, yes. If I report yeah. it and you pick them up, you put them in jail? No, them. they get a citation. They 50 get a bunch. Yeah, bucks. probably not much, and then they'll never come back to Casper. What about <laughs> missionaries? No. Missionaries? No. <laughs> we should have two of those, but no. That'd be missionaries nice. Don't. Like missionaries that. don't have to have those. Um, but they could, you know, they could dress up like a major. <laughs> they could. Again, as far as um, thing that I always tell people is, no matter how much we, whether say they're um, with a church organization right now, just be real careful and let people into your house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because as far as there are a lot of times they're casing to come into your house. Mm -hmm. Casing, I'm sorry, I don't want to use police terms, but casing is when people put a lookout, trying to find out if it gives them the best opportunity of what could be in a residence or how to get into that residence. If you ever see someone in your neighborhood, a vehicle that doesn't belong there and it just seems to be there every once in a while, and it seems to be again across the street, call the police department, let them know about it. If you can get a license plate number or description, let us know, because again, a lot of times that's what burglars do. They'll sit in neighborhoods and they'll find out what people's patterns are. Um, they'll also figure out as far as even people that don't work. Okay. And I'm sure you guys have a thing like every day or every certain time of um, the week, you guys go to like this meeting or something. A person can sit around and find that and then what they'll do is they'll just jump out real quick, try to see if you leave anything unlocked. And then jump back in the vehicle real quick. They won't do anything that day. And then next week they see the same pattern, hey, you leave at this time, they'll get out and check to see if you've left that door unlocked again. It's something a lot of times these burglars have patience. They have a lot of patience because when they strike, they're wanting to get a lot out of it. So they're not wanting to get caught. So then the third time, now they've seen a pattern that you leave every Tuesday at 10 o'clock and you're gone from 10 to 12, and you always leave this side door unlocked. The third Thursday, third, third Thursday Tuesday, when you come back at 12.15, you have a bunch of stuff missing out of your house. It's nothing they did. So they plan on that. So always, even in the day, lock your house. My mom, my parents moved here in 1968, and um, they've grown up here and they've seen, um, you know, Casper change a lot. And I can still not cannot keep my mom to lock her doors. <laughs> As a police officer, said, Mom, please do not become a victim. Um, try to prevent that. She's like, well, Casper is such a nice little town. I'm like, it's not a nice little town anymore, Mom. It was in 68. Um, yeah. You know, my still, son's a cop. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't need to worry about that. Yeah. And she still takes her car keys and just throws them on the floorboard. And um, I've got her to quit doing that, at least, okay. as far as. Um, but again, a lot of people think, especially people that have been here and lived in Casper for a lot of years, um, Casper um, is a, still a good, safe community, but we're, it's getting crazier and crazier if you guys. Um, I've heard, unfortunately, um, with our officer involved shooting day four yesterday. Um, we've actually had three officer involved shootings in the last 15 months. Um, like I said, before that, that have been like, probably approximately 15 years that I've been on the police department, and I think we probably had four in that 15 years, mm -hmm. three or four, and we've had three in the last 15 months. Um, things are getting a lot more scarier out there as far as for us as law enforcement. I used to tell everyone, um, that when I got hired on, I mean, we make a pretty good wage for here at Casper, Wyoming, but that's that hourly wage is going way down now, considering on how dangerous it really is out there. And I have all my respect to these um, police officers in New York, Chicago, LA, Denver. You know, every time they go out every day, you know, they tell us at all trainings, you know, kiss your wife and family because you might might be the last time you kiss or hug them. I uh, always says a young police officer will kiss Casper, Wyoming. You know, but it's getting now as far as it's it's getting scarier out there, and so people are becoming a lot more desperate. Methamphetamine is coming back um, at a very rapid pace, and you guys have been here for a while. We got kind of meth went down, quit being the meth capital. And the main reason we kept quit becoming the meth capital is because the meth labs kind of um, we really put a hinkering on the meth labs and shut them down. Um, our Federal government did a great thing on banning a lot of the precursors that they made meth with, or make meth with, and are making it a lot harder to get it. Like pseudoephedrine, you have to go behind the counter to get it. It was all a great thing. Um, the problem now is our neighbors to the south in Mexico, 
they are making mega labs mm -hmm. here in, in Wyoming. We had our labs. You were okay to get, when they make a lab, you can maybe get a um, few ounces to a pound out of the lab in, in, in a week or a couple of days. These labs down in Mexico are cranking out 100 to 150 pounds a day of methamphetamine, and it is flooding across our borders like crazy. Um, well, unfortunately, there are still people that are addicted to meth here in Casper and everything else, and so it's flooding back in. With that, the reason why I say our crime rate is starting to go back up a lot. Our, our residential burglaries, our auto burglaries, where people break into cars and steal stuff. This drug is a very, very nasty drug. It's very um, addictive. And so when a person can't get it, they need to um, buy money somehow. They'll do it however. They'll break into your cars um, and steal whatever. They don't care. We used to have where they used to go to pawn shops. But um, we now have a thing where anything that's pawned is ran through the Casper Police Department. And the person has to give their um, photo ID and also their, uh, have a, a snapshot of them when they pawn something. And so we know exactly what pawn. So if I get a, a saw stolen and I make a police report or anything else, and I find out that saw is that depend upon, I know exactly who pawned that. And I call the police department, we actually can arrest that person. Again, we did something very good, so now the criminal was like, don't pawn anything. So they just exchange it for drugs. So you still go steal that same saw, and they used to go steal the saw, go down to depend upon, pawn that, get some money to go buy drugs. Now they just bring that saw to their drug dealer and say, hey, I have this saw. They give them the drugs for it, and then the drug dealers take it to Salt Lake City, Denver, wherever, and they get their money out way by pawning it, or they exchange it for other things. So um, we are starting to see, unfortunately, some more violent crime um, and, and assaults and things like that. It's all over drugs and in Casper here. Yes? I've been solicited online about the neighborhood watch. Mm -hmm. And they're coming to Casper, and it's a neat deal. And, and do you know what you yep. think about that? Yep, it's uh, the online one. Yes, yes, that is something that is. Um, is that a legitimate it's a, show? It's a legitimate. It's something what we find out. We're trying to. We're pushing it out. Um, You're pushing it out. So yeah, the yeah. Casper Police Department. They're actually. We we decided to do it. My sergeant uh, Joe Nickerson actually went to a school um, about a year ago when they were talking about it. He started looking at it. And so when we, as a Casper Police Department, signed up on it here a few months ago, we actually already found out some people had already signed up on it through it. It's a, a national um, internet uh, protection thing, and what is like Neighborhood Watch. And what we're finding right now is people have become so big of social media, Neighborhood Watches just aren't anymore. People don't go and have their little meetings once a month. They don't have a, cap, uh, a captain like what they used to have. Everyone's on social media, and unfortunately, I mean, as far as I'm sure if you guys have lived in any place um, for very long, and if you have new neighbors move out, it's getting harder and harder to get to know your new neighbors. You might see them by waving, but you don't, you know, talk to each other. Everyone's on their cell phones, on computers. So what this is, is um, this next door is a neighborhood watch that's social media. So you sign up and get your neighborhood signed up. What we try to get it pushed out through the media, um, was a lot of people were a little leery about it, thinking it was Big Brother watching. We cannot see anything that's going on unless you guys, your neighborhood allows the police department to see it. So if you guys go on where your neighborhoods are signed up for it and say, hey, did you see that blonde male walking around the neighborhood last night? Yeah, I saw him last week. All that's between your guys' group. We don't see it. When you guys say, hey, maybe we need to let the Casper Police Department know about this, then you publish that to us, and now we know about this blonde haired male that's been walking around the neighborhood. So you guys can mention anything. Hey, we're having a block party. Hey, we're having a barbecue. Come by. It's not only set up for um, law enforcement. It's set up for anything about with, hey, did you realize, are you having problems with your water pressure? Yes, I'm having problems with my water pressure. Well, then maybe we should get a hold of the water department. You know, it's a way to try to bring a community back together through social media to talk to it. If we used to just get out in our yards and our fences and talk to people, now it's more or less that's what it's trying to do. So people can talk about that. Hey, did you notice, you know, that they didn't pick your garbage up? Yeah, they didn't pick my garbage up. Okay, let's call the sanitation. So it's not only what we want from law enforcement is people see these things suspicious, that they let us know about it. But yes, that is um, a legitimate thing to sign up for. I think you need to have 10 residents, um, 10 people in your neighborhood before you can actually become one. 
and then um, be part of it. But yes. Yes, ma'am. Last weekend, I live out towards Barnard, mm -hmm. out by the Mini Mart. Uh -huh. And right across the street from me is, in the back, is Miller's Insulation, and there's nothing in the log house in front. But there was a white SUV, and he went in, and he went around, and he come back out, and he turned around between that driveway and my driveway. And he did this about a dozen times. I was sitting in the chair watching, and I began to get a little leery, and I didn't know whether to call or whether to to say, well, it was somebody was waiting for this maybe Miller insulation to right. come or what? My thing is, if you have to think, should I call? Call. Anytime you have to ask myself, should I? You're starting to doubt. If you're like, oh, that's normal. Like, I see people come in. Oh, it's well, it wasn't normal and because in, he was set right. And that's what I said. As far as that, with anyone, well, I speak for myself, the Cass Police Department, or any other law enforcement agency, we much rather someone say. I don't know if I call, but they call, and we go out there and we find out it's just someone waiting for somebody. So yeah, I'm just bored. I keep driving around because mm -hmm. I'm bored and I'm waiting for someone to show up. We make contact with that person. I'd much rather, as a police officer, go and make contact with a person and find out that a legit person be there, than find out that's actually someone that was trying to look at that business to break into it later and everything else, and someone didn't call in. So let me ask you this, how would you feel if all of a sudden the next day there's a bunch of police officers over there yeah. and come and say, hey, did you see anything last night? Because this business got broke into and they're missing $10,000 worth of equipment. Did you see anything? Oh, I knew I should have called. That's how I always tell people, if you ever think, should I call the police, you should already be dialing the number. Are you calling 911? Um, the non-emergency number? It depends on what you're seeing. If you're seeing someone actively break into something, you by all means call 911. Well, everybody knows 911, but everybody doesn't know the police department number. What? Is, is there a non-emergency number, like something to call for that? Yes, there is. And it depends. The sheriff's office has one, um, and the police department has all the police department. It's listed in the front of the phone book still, under oh, okay. departments and everything else. Um, I, can, uh, I can get them also to you. I guess I could mail you out all the different numbers and you get them to the sure. there. Mm -hmm. I can type something up real quick, the different numbers, and then your guys' next meeting, I'll send you Scott as far as just the different. Great. The, yeah. um, I'll put the uh, the Sheriff's Office, the Police Department, Mills Police Department, and Evansville Police Department on there, and I'll just email that out to you okay. and get to you guys so you can have them on there, put them on your fridge or something like that. I was going to say that would be easier than you have to go find a book. Right. <laughs> yep. I can do that and I'll get that out. and. Um, I'll send it to you, and then you can continue just to give it as up to me. Yeah, people that's, you want. that's why I like 911. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's funny? Everybody far? knows it no matter where you're at. And that's the thing, before you came, as far as we were talking about 911 and when to dial or not, you know, we, you'll never get in trouble for dialing 911 for something like that. I don't know the number, but this is what's going on. Um, usually, where people that are dispatched get upset with is um, I've been waiting for a cab. And they haven't picked me up. <laughs> I call it 911, my wife. Well, I'm just telling you, I've been waiting for an hour, and they didn't come again. You know, as far as so a lot of times our dispatchers, okay, this is abuse of the 911 line. Please do not call this again. Mm -hmm. And you know, so yeah, if, if if you can't remember, you're somewhere and you can't remember it. And by all means, we want you to report a crime, and you can dial 911. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's a the the thing about it, I tell people about 911. It's not what we say is an emergency. It's what you believe is an emergency. That is what 911 is for an emergency. And an emergency, I, I am not here to put up on a board, this is what an emergency is. Because what you might think is an emergency is not on that board. And they're like, well, Detective Hatch says I've got to be on that board for me to call. If you think it's an emergency, call. If something's happening and you don't have that number with you, the non emergency number, that's an emergency. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd much rather someone call 911 and say, I think they're, I think someone just hit well, someone's car out here. Well, I, I know someone just hit their car and took off. I know I'm not supposed to call this, but I know there's a non-emergency number, but I don't remember it. But I just want you to know that a car has been hit at the senior center, and this is the description of the car leaving the area. I mean, that's, that's an emergency, because I'd much rather catch that person that just sideswiped a car, mm -hmm. and that's an emergency in that case. So, I know I've been talking a lot here. Questions you guys have of me? Going back to scams for a minute, um, is that common? Like, how many... How often do you get a call about scams in Casper? Um, 
As far as when I was working on paper crime stuff, I probably saw scams um, come across my desk where people reported probably a couple of weeks. Wow. Um, now that I'm in this position, I probably get four or five phone calls a week that people are calling me. The other ones when I was actually actively working cases, those are just people that would go and write a report, you know, have a police officer come over. A lot of people, now that I'm in this position, they're just calling me to let me know there's a scam. So I'm, I'm finding out there's a lot more scams going on out there that people are necessarily calling the police department. They know it's a scam. They just want the police department to know, but they don't want a police officer to come over and take a report from them. They just want me to know that, hey, this happened. Do you know about this one? Um, so I'm so people are recognizing scams. Yeah, yeah they are. And unfortunately, though, we're still losing money to people. People we're are still scamming about it on the news. No matter what's happening. On, on uh, Channel 6 and Channel 13. I try to go on a lot, and I try to do a lot of different um, stuff, even on our social media, and, and trying to warn <coughs> people about scams and out there. And, and that's what we've really been harping on a lot is the green dots. If it's a green dot, it's a scam. Um, because they, they invent different scams all the time. And I always tell people, evidently they're making good money at it because scams would dry up if they didn't work. So you have to imagine it's got someone sitting there all day long sitting at a computer just phone calling one after another, see if they can find a fish to hook. And they hook it, they land it, and they get the money out of it and they keep going. So it's got to be profitable or they wouldn't continue to do it. Um, so yeah, we're out at Casper. So like I said, I've seen even more in my new position that there's even more scam orders that are happening here in Casper. The, another one that I dealt with um, was a lady that she won another prize. And they said they're coming from Salt Lake City, but they're having problem, vehicle problems. So could they send her a little more money? And this one, they weren't using the green dot. They were having her go down and um, wire, wire money um, through Western Union. But they're like, um, we made it to some town called Rock Springs. You got to Rock Springs, Wyoming? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Okay, well, we've ran out of gas. Can you send us some money? Can you wire some money? So she wires some money. And this had went on for about a day, and her, her uh, son came over, and she's like, hey, these people are bringing me money. And they're coming from Salt Lake, but they've been having some car problems, and they ran out of gas. And her, her son's like, knock it off while I'm stopping. The next time they call, he said, I know this is a scam. I know where you guys are at. I know what's going on. We're calling the local police officer. They're like, yeah, right. You think we're really in Rock Springs, Wyoming? We tried to catch a sucker. And I don't know why. Because <laughs> they weren't in Rock Springs, Wyoming. They pulled out a map and just kind of realized we were closer. And, yeah. and they were sending money. And so they even know it. Um, I happened to be somewhere. I was actually on another police call. And some scam cars, cars came in. So I picked up the phone. And I tried to identify myself and everything else, and the same person laughed. He says, I know, you, they said, if you're a real police officer, you know you're not going to track which phone I'm calling from because this is a dummy line. So don't try to give me any of your threats that you're going to catch me and come arrest me because I know you can't touch me. So they even know it, I mean, which makes it really sad. I mean, because they, they, know that they know that they're not going to get arrested for it and anything about it. So mm -hmm. what we like to warn people are the local people that are trying to scam people out of money that we can catch. Um, that are going around like the, the snow shovelers, the lawn mowers. Those people come around trying to get money out of you for things um, like that way. Some other questions. Uh, this <laughs> is are, not a scam. I just want yeah. are, there, are there any new scams? I mean, is there, are you seeing the same ones pretty much over and over? Or? Um, the, 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 like I said, the newest ones are the, uh, the publisher clearinghouse ones. I think that one is the one that's popped up in the last six months. Um, and that one, and like I said, it was like during tax time was the IRS one about, that you didn't fire taxes. How about this one? You get on the phone all the time and they say, we have your life alert ready to send to you. Yeah, did you, did you sign oh, up for life alert? Oh, I've gotten that call. I don't know. I just hang up. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing about, oh, another one is, I forgot the ones that we've, we've happened I, when I went and gave a talk at Primrose. Um, so that was the Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo, I guess, has been calling people saying, um, we've had some problems with um, our accounts. So can you please give I us your can you please give us your account number and verify that your car, your account hasn't been compromised all this? Mm -hmm. If they're the bank, they already have your account number. 
<laughs> they don't need your account number over a phone. And when would a bank ever ask for your account number over right. a phone and your personal information? Can we have your social security number to verify? And that goes not so much in a scam, that goes into identity theft. Well, um, I to, got yeah. that call and it was after 9 o'clock at night mm -hmm. from Wells Fargo, well, the same deal. And I said, well, I don't have a Wells Fargo <laughs> card. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, and that's I a, do. Then I got to thinking, well, maybe. <laughs> so that's one that's came up. That's not so much of a scam. That one is they're going in for identity theft. They're trying to get information out of you. Um, do they go and steal your identity? Um, the same thing. If they can get the same thing with my card. Somehow my card got compromised three times in the last couple months. But I have my debit card with me in my wallet, but they're going and they're, they're withdrawing money, not withdrawing money, they're doing green dot cards actually with their buying off days also. Um, the last time it was here in town, over the 4th of July, they, they bought $550 for the green dot cards at the come and go at 15th of, Bever um, 15th of McKinley. Um, so I have my debit card in my pocket, but somewhere I went, and what it is, is when you go and swipe your credit cards and debit cards, there's, I think, there are only four companies in the United States that have the machines that actually gather all those numbers and then and do the transactions for whatever, whether it's um, a grocery store or La Cocina or any restaurant or anything like that. So they contract out with have that machine put in, they, and that person runs all the money and transfers from your account to the, their account and everything else. So what hackers do is they actually hack one of those companies. And so that is how they get numbers from it. So unfortunately, somewhere I used my debit card, the hackers had hacked that company's numbers and they got everyone's numbers. And over the 4th of July, when I went to my bank, um, they had already had, and I banked at Western Vista, they had already had 15 people at Western Vista that had their cards compromised over the 4th of July. And now I've seen police reports, it's happened all, it's happened in Douglas, Casper, there was one other place, it wasn't Cheyenne, um, but there were up to 57 um, reports so far over the 4th of July that people got there, and locally. Well, you know, anytime you buy a meal at a, at a restaurant and you give them your card, uh, they can copy it. Right, yep. Right, right then and there? Yep, they, they can. Um, we were dealing with that, with I don't want to, uh, to go against any, say anything bad about restaurants, but Guadalajara, here in town, we were having that, and that's what we think would happen. Um, when we came down on them or anything else, we couldn't have proof of it, but we think that's what they're doing. They weren't going through there. They were actually some of their employees, because within 10 to 12 hours after um, you used your car to go to Harvard, they were charged in Cancun, Mexico, and they're always in the same area, because these other ones usually will bounce around where they're using the cards. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking that's probably what they have, and we just never catch them at Guadalajara. That that's what they were doing. They weren't going through. Someone hadn't hacked theirs. It was actually employees writing credit card numbers down, all the information down on them, and then um, shipping those numbers down to Mexico, and then we're using them down in Mexico. I've received a new card that is not a. It has a striped strip on the back, mm -hmm. but they want to insert it. Yeah. And that's a chip on the card itself. Is yeah. that less easy to? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a call. I think it's EB as far as electronic banking or something as far as it stands for. And there's more and more going um, through with that. Um, Western Vista told me that uh, October is when Western Vista is going to get those cards. Um, what I've heard from some people are that they've had problems because some of the readers don't read those new cards because it's new technology. So sometimes that's only problem. Walmart's struggling with it, but they've just now approved it. They right. And so, but yes, that's another thing that's supposed to yeah. be a little more secure. It used to be what they said was. Even though, if you use your credit card, um, if, if someone compromises and wipes out of it, because it's a credit card, it's um, filtering back my money. If you use a debit card, it's sort of like a check. Your bank doesn't necessarily have to give your money back. So debit cards were always say, you know, the credit cards better use a credit card because if you get, all of a sudden, if they wipe you out, the credit card companies is sure and everything else, they'll get your money back. Debit card's going to be up to your lender or your bank whether they're going to let you out or not. But then on the same thing, you used to say, well, a debit card was safer because they had to get your debit card plus your PIN number. They had to get two different things, so they had to hack. One, they had to hack the machine to get your credit card number, and then they had to with that personal identification number that was supposed to be secured. Now it's so easy now, evidently, they've come up with technology. 
um, they hack pin numbers just as easy they can't credit card number. So that personal identification number, so I think this is what they're going to now, again, to try to... Um, what about the calls you get on a credit card that they want to update it, but you don't even have that credit card? Again, it could be something as far as, I want to say they're all, they're not all um, illegitimate kind of um, calls. It could be a legitimate call. It could, for some reason, if it was a card you forgot you even had maybe a long time ago and they still in their system. The thing I'd warn you about is when they start asking you for personal information. You don't want to give any personal information over the phone. So if they say, hey, we want to up your credit limit on your MasterCard, and like, I don't have a MasterCard, well, maybe you forgot, maybe you had one 10 or 15 years ago and you're still in the system. But when they start saying, okay, this is what we need, and they start saying, we need, can you verify your social security number for me? Can you verify this personal information? When they start asking you to verify personal information, again, they should have all that. Mm -hmm. Now, you tell me what my social security number is, and I will tell you if that's right or not. You give me the middle two of my social security number, I'll tell that's right. Same thing with these Wells Fargo's when they call. If they're the bank and they're really worried that the bank's card numbers have been compromised, they'll have your information. So you tell me, what's my security code? And I will tell you if that's right or not. And they'll go, uh, uh, no, exactly, no. You have it in your system that my security code is my wife's maiden name. I put that in there. You should know what it is and this is what it is. So anytime with these people when they start doing things, would they be called the credit card company? Because there could be ones out there that are just they're trying to get people hooked on credit cards. I mean, um, unfortunately, we've become a society that they want us to be in debt and be knee deep and head over, head over heels in debt. So there could be ones out there that are trying to get to upgrade your credit card limits on a credit card you forgot you even had. So, but just watch the personal information you give out, um, including online. Um, anything you put online, when you order anything, it's out there in the World Wide Web for anyone to hack. Um, and to have. So just be careful on, unfortunately, there's a lot of stuff that we have to put in there if you're ordering different things or going online for stuff. Just be very, very careful on what you put out there because anything you put out there, everyone knows about it. Um, I was shocked that um, with my, my dad, I, I, I go online and check my, my family stuff and everything else, and my dad passed away five years ago now. And I actually I went in there and just typed his name, Googled his name and everything else, and it shows that he's buried at a veteran cemetery out here um, mm. in Evansville. And what day he died of or died and everything else, it gives a whole bunch of things about him. And his social security number is in there. I found his social security number. Now, I don't even know, I know I know my dad ever gave his social security number out. Um, but his social security number, I can I Googled his social security number. His social security number, all the businesses he ever owned, everything. Mm -hmm. And my dad was one that he wasn't really big in computers, so, but somehow through the years there was mm -hmm. information gathered. But I thought it was interesting that I even found out what the day died. It showed where his um, memorial service was at and what time it was. I found that online. Everything's on there. Any information that's out there. And where I'm sure they got it from was the Star Tribune when we published it for the obituary in Star Tribune. They got in there, but it wasn't the Casper Star Tribune actual information that was on there. It wasn't from their obituary, or obituary we give them Casper Star Tribune, someone else had searched Casper Star hmm. Tribune and it sucked that information and put it out there. So, we, it's not a private society anymore. Um, it's out there, so. Some other concerns or questions that you guys have seen. I'm a scam. I need $10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need $10. <laughs> Anything else that you guys need our questions about? What a nice class. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, like I said, I, 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 I my, me and my parents are older and everything like that and seeing the scams and everything else, and, and I just have a heart for elderly people as far as in how they get scammed <coughs> on stuff. Not that I don't have it for our younger people also, but like I said, a lot of times I think they take um, people's confusion where they go on, and, and the world is starting to really get fast-paced and things happen and, and a person can come start talking technology and if you guys might be all up on technology but I know my mom she's 77, 78 years old she doesn't, she has a smartphone but she doesn't know how to use it, I don't even know why she has a smartphone <laughs> but I bet there's stuff out there and so I think a lot of times when you get someone and they prey on the elderly people because they know you might not be up on what the lingo is, stuff like that so they start talking and they're like, okay, that makes sense. And they're they're salesmen, they're used car salesmen kind of thing about it. And they and um, the elderly kind of fall 
victims of stuff, and then they wipe out the account. Like I said, not that I cannot stand $6,000 being drawn out of my account, but at least I'm young enough now that that's not hurting me as much as any of you guys all of a sudden $6,000 get out of your guys' accounts. And on retirements and Social Security or anything else, that's a big chunk. So, so anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much.